Yes, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Bootcast Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. I am with my fellow Cole co host, Colby. Colby, man, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm on baby watch right now because my wife is literally 40 weeks pregnant, about to go. So Sheesh. if I have to run out of this podcast real quick, uh, you know we'll, why? We'll just we'll just like cut it, like <laughs> just like bring up like those. Please stand by, you know, like the old 70s graphics. Uh, I come Dude, back so I'm in the hype. hospital room, like, hey, Justin, sorry about that. Yeah, buddy. like like Beyond Rivers, like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> I'm we here. made it. <laughs> um, oh, besides that, that's huge. That's a massive thing. What's been going on, man? How's life? How's the cleat? You got cleat updates? Uh, I got yeah, I got a few cleat updates. Um, I don't have them with me right now because I actually boo. already sold them. I know, I know, boo. Yeah, so I got the uh, Pearl Tiempo Legend okay. 10s 30th okay. anniversary. Very, very clean looking boot, dude. Probably mm-hmm. one of the best boot presentations I've seen in a very long time. Um, so, so you, if we had potted yet, we almost potted yesterday. I kind of, uh, you know, I wish I had the box with me, but. Um, inside velvet the string bag was incredible the boot was incredible um so many amazing details on the boot um and the way that the pattern was kind of how the like stitching pattern would be on a traditional leather boot Mm -hmm. kind of like that quilted quality it's so weird because in your brain like i kept picking it up and trying to like do the old you know plush two thumbs um on it that everybody does and it was like this doesn't feel right. <laughs> this, this doesn't feel like what it looks like it should feel like. Um, so that, and that's what I'll say about that boot is like presentation was like 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. But then when you take the boot out, you feel it, you put it on, it's just Tampa Legend 10. It, and I will say like the upper of it, it does feel different um, than the like normal kind of pattern that they put on it. Mm-hmm. Um, it <laughs> It it almost didn't to me it felt it felt kind of weird like it it was okay it just didn't feel even as plush as the other Tampa Legend really? so yeah it it almost like it it was just completely aesthetics yeah if, I, I if I'm being say, honest I was say, how you're describing this sounds all flash no substance like that's all it is yeah and the and the soul plate was incredible too it's just like all the it's like all the coolest looking boot i think i've ever had i've ever made a video on if you want to check out my video i'm gonna plug it here go to at kicking with colbs on instagram or my youtube channel but yeah it's one of the most gorgeous boots i've ever i've ever made a video on Mm -hmm. but and it was so gorgeous that you still got rid of it because it's still a legend 10 it's still Legend Ten, and like, there was a good story. There was there was a guy. Um, I'll plug him. Um, Axel Cleats, three S's, Cleats. Um, he had a uh, a need for those for for a friend of his, so um, he reached out, and we were able to get the uh, the boots over to him. But um, there you go. Yeah, send him to a loving home. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like an adopted dog or something. Yeah, like, it's not for me, but you know. Yeah, I'm glad he, somebody, he found a good home. Somebody's feet will fit into this. Uh, some. Okay, so so the the pearl tempos mm-hmm. on the on look scale we're gonna say ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. But it's still a legend ten. We've beat this horse. I mean, we've beat this horse to death. Yeah, yeah. It's we, not we a boot like for to us. Beat horses on this show. We really yeah. do. And, you know, we talked about we love animals last podcast, and people called us out. <laughs> so um, no. So, but at the end of the day, it's still a legend ten. Like it's mm-hmm. all it's all looks. It's all aesthetics. Right. So there's nothing. Right. It didn't feel any different to you. There was nothing that you're like, oh wow. I want to wear this. Yeah. Yeah. I will say like of all the string bags I've ever owned that string that if there was like an S tier for string bags, that would be at the very top. That was the nicest string bag I've ever held. Like I almost, I almost wish I could have like sold it to the guy and be like, Hey bro, like I'll cut you down. Like, you know, Dang, oh, just the just string to bag. Just to keep this. Oh, it was man. so nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, no, that's cool. And then you got another pair of boots that I don't yes, think I anybody's did. seen yet. Oh, yes, I did. Um, well, they may have seen on this Jeez. podcast before, just because it's made its way around Texas, California, back to Texas. But um, yeah, Julio, Boot Maniac, thank you so much, brother. Like, these are gorgeous, pearlized, Predator, 24, Predator 30, whatever you call them. Those are um, literally gorgeous. the pair I bought him, aren't they? Yeah. That is the pair yeah. I bought him. Yeah, you, you might, you should have saved yourself some time and just give them straight I, to me. I should have. Yeah. Um, what's weird about these compared to the um, Pred Strike is, like, they actually fit better. Um, the heel, like the heel lockdown, is better on these. I know that the texture is a little bit smoother. Yeah, I was going to ask the, you. Did, uh, you, know, did you did you finally get to like feel what yeah. I was trying to describe all those months ago? 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome, dude. I love these boots. I love the fit. Um, this, you know, what's funny is because um, I go back and forth, and I know we've talked about this on the podcast previously. I go back and forth on the youth throat tongue <laughs> a lot. I think it can be done well sometimes, and sometimes it's just like in the way, and you feel it, and it's like, oh god, just make it knit. Um, but like what Adidas have done here with this, and I'll stop bringing it up at some point, but it's just perfect. Like I know that you know. So many people and, and collectors and you are going to say, get the fold over tongue. If you're not interested in that, if you don't want the extra bulk over the top, this is one of the best boots that with this tongue, like it's, it's awesome. So they've, Adidas have completely just crushed it on tongue for nostalgia and then no tongue for just functionality. It's awesome. Yeah, performance. See, the good thing too, though, is like, of course, I'll, yeah, I'll always promote the tongue. Like that's what I grew up on. I love the tongue models, but like for somebody like you that enjoys just the, the regular tongue, mm -hmm. those have not been selling. Like we, we've seen that same with the yeah. laceless. So eventually you're going to get those on discount. And I definitely mm -hmm. think that this is a boot of how you've spoken about them compared to other boots that you probably should stock up a few pairs on. I probably should. Yeah. Yeah. If I can get this, this same colorway, like I definitely, and I know that, um, somebody in, uh, on our comments, I think we said the last one we saw was the Japan colorway. I think he, he kind of gave us a few after that from the boot calendar on footy headlines. So, Oh yeah, I did see that. Yeah, you're right. I do remember after he, brought it up and i looked at him yeah i remember like the blue pink and white ones that have like the yeah battle yeah pack. those are the ones that i, I was like oh yes, yes yeah, yeah 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 and then the the other all black ones that have like the yellow accents those look mm -hmm. kind of cool too so yeah. i don't remember who it is off the top of my head but whoever you I'll were come, i'll put thank your you. name i'll put your name right yeah. here yeah thank you yeah <laughs> thank you very I'll much come, for the correct right here yeah um okay so you said that the heel fit did anything else feel different to you did the toe box did anything the sole plate anything feel different uh, compared to your pressure oh tricks? okay um now i'll say like uh maybe a little bit tighter um out here on the outside but it, it didn't take too long to get comfortable in it i gave them about um probably like a good hour and a half i it's funny some boots i get so comfortable in them i just i don't want to take them off and i don't mean comfortable like my feet feel i mean like my touch and the way i'm working the ball and how i'm like move if i have like a <clears throat> if i have a ladder out there like the way I move through that, like, it's just, okay, I'm getting really comfortable with these. I want to make sure that the next time I put them on, whether it's like pickup or an outdoor game, like it's going to feel like pretty seamless. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm weird like that, dude. Like, you, you know, like guys like us, we think like, we rely more on like how, um, our boots fit and feel rather than like, I'm a skillful player. I can play oh, yeah. anything like, no, no that's absolutely not, me. not. That's not me. No. I always say that like the boots that I wear define the skill that I have. That, yes. So like the better the boot, the better I feel like I'm doing. Most of my oh, yeah. friends are like, no, not at all. Dude, and, and you know what's so funny, bro, is I'm I'm starting to push that onto my kid. Like he was he was falling down in his indoor game and mm -hmm. I was like, It's the shoes. I was like <laughs> I had him in a pair of Tampa Legend Nines, I was like, I was like, they're they're too big, they're too bulky. And I had him come mm -hmm. over and I sw I switched his boots like while Mid he was subbed off. There you go. See? Yeah. That's it's exactly how I'm with my coach. So, no, yeah. I get it. I'm just the same way. And even my son, he's, like, getting pickier. My oldest son is getting pickier. So he'll be like, no, I don't like those. Or, like, oh, I like these better. And he had his – he's got those – uh preds you know in the u size mm -hmm. and at first he was wearing them and he was like no they don't feel right so then he wanted to put his laceless ones back on and he was like okay these feel better and then he's like okay i want to go back to the white ones now so he yeah. he's very like he likes certain boots how they look and other boots he does not like and he will not wear them yeah yeah dude kids like the laceless boots man my kids came up to me he's like everybody else doesn't have to tie their shoes i'm like i'm sorry that's just, oh yeah you're, rep you're representing me out there you have to wear like see i tried laces. i tried that with with my oldest and he just was not he just says that you're too hard to get on so yeah. he even with like a shoehorn he's just like i don't no nah, i don't care I yeah go. not worth it yeah so we just we just buy ties now so good everybody's pred this this whole boot podcast is all preds now that's you right. got preds. Your boy's Pred about cast. to preds. Yeah, dude. Oh man, we're we're all pred heads. Uh, second channel coming soon. Yeah. Oh, the pred cast. <laughs> all we do is just strictly talk about just predators. Pred. Just preds all day. The shoes, guys, not the other kind of predators. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah, that's so clarify. So we're gonna hit this a little late. Episode twenty. Who's your number twenty? Gonzalo Higuain. Ooh. What? Oh, I can't what? stand Higuain, Come on, bro. 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 Come on. Okay. Put some respect. No, none at all. He, oh, 
That dude is a fraud. That guy. Okay, I know oh, I said God. Julian Jesus. Alvarez was a fraud. Okay, yeah. I take back. He did do okay in the World Cup. Higuain cost Messi that 2014 World Cup. Yeah, he well, is ass. And I don't care if he ever sees this podcast. I think he is a terrible footballer. <laughs> he is so overrated. He's one of those guys that just was always on the right team somehow. Like, I don't understand it. But he what about is his... terrible. Okay, okay. Madrid, I get. Madrid, terrible. I get. But what about his time in Italy? What about Juventus? Terrible. Him at Juventus? How many, oh. how many, how many times did they win Champions League with him? Oh, that's – okay. That's a good point. Loser. Didn't win World Cup. Loser. Okay. He a loser, bro. He a loser. I can't right, stand but, it. And he's the slowest person I think I've – maybe besides like Sergio Busquets. He's one of the slowest people I've ever seen on the field. Yeah, yeah. And then he came to Miami, and he was all like toting like, oh, yeah, I'm so good, this and that. He played like one training. He was like, oh, it's so hard here. Like I don't even uh, – I was severely underestimated. It's like, <laughs> what? What? That's right, bro. That's right. Bro, yeah, well, that dude is – oh, I cannot uh, – I – I normally like to give people a hard time. I will say horrible shit about that man, and I don't care at all. I'm going to get demonetized. I don't care. I cannot oh, stand him. I don't think we get demonetized because you hate Wayne, but all um, right, man. Who's who's your number 20? Dude, bro? my number 20 is not much better because this is a really hard number, but just the United fan to me, I'm just going to say Delo because it's just like, Delo. yeah, there, like there's not really many number 20s to pick. Like I could pick Vinny at, you uh, could pick, um, at Madrid, but everybody if knows you him go for seven now. For a current number twenty, you could pick um, Bernardo Silva, who oh, I think yeah. will. Okay, that's go a good choice. So let's go greats. Silva, even though yeah. it's Man City. That dude. Okay, see, Higuain massively overrated. Bernardo Silva massively underrated. Like that oh, dude yeah. puts in shifts. He does a lot of the grunt work. That dude mm -hmm. is a very clutch player for them, just like Gundogan was. Uh, yeah. That okay. Bernardo, good choice. Good All choice. Right, there we go. That's the right answer. But everyone. I still like Delo too. Yeah. Um, okay, let's keep moving on. Okay, so you got the pearls. I don't know if I'm going to get the emeralds. I go back and forth. I did see him in person the other day. I think I think if you want to go for one, I mean, so this is the other thing we have is I think that, okay, so since boots are in such limited quantities now, mm -hmm. is like the hype in your head almost confusing the amount of quality that the boot is giving you? Like it, Like with the Trent boots or the pearls, it's almost like, Oh, those boots, like they're so limited. They're or or with the the Pred ninety four, there's only supposedly like one thousand nine hundred and ninety four pairs. Does that necessarily make the boot like in some way better? Like if i don't know. No. That's, I get what I get what you're trying to say. Like, does it put more value because of how limited they right. are? No, like it it doesn't. Not not in that instance. Like I think there's some boots where yeah, you get more value, but it's I don't even think it's because of how limited they really are. Like, do you remember the um, – oh, what was – okay. We're on the Crazy Fast, right? Mm -hmm. That's the X model. Okay. Do you remember when the X Crazy Fast, like that Bugatti edition was supposed to come yeah. out? And it was like the cryptocurrency one? That one was limited to like 10 pairs. And I don't know anybody who really cared about those. The Unisport ones, the Synced, I just looked. Mm -hmm. That's still available in every size. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. And th yeah. that's, I think it's like 250 pairs worldwide. So it's like massively limited pairs. So I don't think that it's necessarily the how limited boots are that mm – -hmm. because most brands aren't actually numbering like boxes and boots. So I think that that's why a lot of people don't really care about that. Yeah, yeah. They should, and they should absolutely start – putting a number to every boot and that I th that i think would increase like the quality and the value of the boot but see i don't want them to do that why not what's your reasoning for that it's just because like i've had this discussion with a few people and uh the problem that i always have with numbering especially an individual boot is it always brings in scalpers and mm -hmm. Like, that's it. And, like, resellers. Like, when people see a number on a boot, they are always going to go after it harder because there's a limit. They know that there's a, a max. And when you have boots like that, then that's when you get these outrageous prices. Like, look at the uh, – uh, what is it? The Pred 30. Mm -hmm. How many pairs was that made? Nin 1994 also? 1,994? Oh, I don't know. I don't on know the Pred 30. But the released. Pred 30 was – extremely limited they're all mm -hmm. numbered the or at least the box is numbered and like look i mean we just talked about it the other day it's like over a thousand dollars yeah yeah 
for that it's, it's it's nuts dude what were you telling me the uh the trent boots in my size are going for the other day like 800 or something like that it was like yeah i think after shipping yeah. and everything it was like 773 get out get out dude you know what i mean so it's just like yeah. it's like things like that it's really hard and like the problem too is like for example the pearls okay the i think the pearls have been more sought after than the emeralds mm-hmm. the emeralds seem to still pretty much be available yeah you can still get some emeralds okay if you want. so let's take the pearls Look at how how long it took the pearls to kind of sell out, quote unquote, on all the retailers, and then people are trying to resell them. And I've seen them like have elevated prices, and you're yeah. just quickly watching those prices drop back to basically retail. Oh yeah, you you saw the one I said you where yeah. it was like five hundred bucks on eBay, and then like within the same day four hundred bucks on eBay, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Be, and that's the problem. Like, I think that the when you do limited things like that, I think it works if the boot is a great boot and people mm-hmm. like the boot. But I don't think that having a limited pair is going to make people want the boot. Right. That's a good. That's a great point. That's a great point. So that's where I'm at. Okay. But like, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna roll this back a little bit. You just brought up the Pred 94. Hmm. Bro, I got him. I got him in hand. Got him. I got him. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> I finally got him. Oh, Jesus. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> Shameless plug uh, at the edge, baby. Oh, Jesus. Dude. That, that's, that's not the Pred 94. This that's... is the Pred 94. I know. It's, a, it's the Pred 94 it's, Edge what, Edge Edition. Yeah, see? Pred 94. <laughs> Boom. I got it. I will say, of all the Predator Edges, those are the ones that I, I considered getting These the ones? most. Really? Yeah. yeah. The leather, I dude. will say, though, like being a huge Edge head... That oh, I'm gonna co- coin that term, edgehead. Uh, they are softer because they, I think they're made from fusion skin and leather, kind of like how the Roteros are, like compared to my David Beckham pairs or whatever. Um, but yeah, just a cool boot. So like you, you brought it up last week, like I'm becoming Thanos, bro. I gotta get a mm-hmm. couple more. Yeah, just get um, a few more, dude. dude. I've got some at the uh, the local outlet mall, so you Shit. can go pick those up there. But yeah, dude, I got them all the way from uh, Lockhart Boot Blog from in japan he found them and they were like a, a little over a hundred bucks Jeez. and then even after shipping they came out to like less than 150 dollars. and i found them on a few websites and people are still asking around 200 so mm-hmm. i think i got a steal i don't know if i'll actually wear these i, I don't know really, oh, you should i don't really like black boots you know yeah, that. Me either like i'd rather wear this oh my gosh this really boot. is the this really is podcast <laughs> All right, all right. Well, if this is Predcast and you're talking about the Pred 94, let's go ahead and uh, get on this topic. So, uh, Pred 94, mm-hmm. did you see the Unisport video with J. Mike? You kind of saw like I did not close. watch it. So, if you want to fill me in, tell okay. me about it. Tell me, tell me about what J. Mike said. Okay, so I don't know if I don't know if I'm like a novice to this at all, but when he so he had the uh, new Pred 94s, he had the old Pred 94s. <laughs> when he pulled both of those out, I don't know if it's just like the novice, like non whatever eyes that i have but um like it it looked so similar like mm-hmm. it looks so incredibly similar um so he was saying like he really he really liked them he likes the um the fusion skin he likes the heel to them obviously the design same soul plate as the uh regular preds um with the the eyes um every it, it looks like a really good boot honestly um and it looks like a really – it's a really close remake. I think the um, the rubber elements, the striking elements, they're a little bit tapered down from the original because I think the original is just sort of raised a little bit more. But mm-hmm. overall, man, it looked it looked like a really good solid boot. Um, so heels better. I don't know if that really – I don't know if that means lockdowns better, but it looks solid. It looked – I know maybe on the past two, three episodes of this podcast, we've kind of talked a little bit of shit about it and said – they look a little bit cheap to us. I will say in those videos, it did not look nearly as cheap as some of the original pictures that I saw. So that's awesome. A lot better quality. So it basically looks like if he pulled the boot out of 1994 and put a modern tooling on it to me, okay. I'm sure there's some people out there that are like, Oh no, like it's not even close to that original blah, blah. But like to me who, you know, yeah, you put them next to it. Okay, you know, I got a pair of freaking fake preds from Dixie the other day, and I had to like, you know, like I, freaking fool me, dude. No, yeah. So. Okay, so after you watch that, does that incline you to maybe go after that? Like, let's say they were readily available. Are you like, yeah, I'll give them a shot? Are you still like, nah? If 
Uh, if I was giving them to try by a friend and I could just give them right back, mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm at. It's like I'm curious enough to really want to try them, but to to buy try them, to, yeah, to buy them, no. Okay. I just I don't like black boots. I think you and I talked about how it's it really it, it's very cool concept, but it's just probably generations too old. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it's like I said before, like I think that some boots. It's okay for them to just be a collector's piece and to look mm -hmm. at. You know what I mean? Like not every boot has to even even remakes. They don't always have to be worn. You know, and I'm okay right. with that. Like just like the original 99 grams um, Addy zeros. I was mm -hmm. okay with if I ever got a pair, never wearing those. Like they look super cool. They're super. It's like a cool futuristic boot. But you don't have to wear those, and that's kind of how I feel with those too. Like yeah. those, if I got them, it would strictly just be. They're readily available. I have the money, and they're going to sit in the box on the shelf with all the other remakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then one day my children can be like, look at what my dad had. Yeah. He spent our college fund on all these. <laughs> Don't do that. Please. <laughs> um, well, this this is kind of like a topic I, I wanted to get into too, and that's like – so I had the pearls, mm -hmm. um, and I know that not everybody could get their hands on them. And I think um, I think James Boot Wizards actually brought this up before. Is if you do get a limited pair, whether it's the Pearls, whether it's the Pred Thirty, whether it's the Pred Ninety Four, what what is your incentive to actually review something like that if only so many people can get those boots? So when I see those, I'm like, that looks awesome. J Mike has a pair; he's hyping it up. But it's like, am I even going to have a chance to get these? Or if I see this Unisport, or if somebody sees this Unisport video. Like if it pops up on their feed and it's two months from now, it's like, oh, that would have been a cool boot to try. But I don't even know why this guy did a video on it if like nobody can get it outside of the first hour yeah, or outside of a raffle. It, it's hard like uh, because I'll, I'll a lot of times like if I'm really interested in a boot, I will, I will watch that. Like the Roteros, I just from originally, like even when we talked about it, I had always wanted I was like, that's a cool looking boot. Like it's different to me. I like the split design. And so then when his video came out, it was like awesome. So I wanted to put content, a bit of content out before because <clears throat> I just really like the boot and I think it's cool. And I've had a lot of other people like start hitting me up once I put like that breakdown video out. People are like, hey, I'm really interested. Like I had a couple guys that were like, do you think that the Rotero is worth, you know, X amount of dollars? And I'm like, dude, I don't think any boot is worth that. But if you're going to if you do want to play with it, like I do think it's a good boot. So it's, it's kind of this like ebb and flow because like you said, so you have people like you who are like, I don't care to look at that. I'm never going to buy those. And you have people mm -hmm. like me that I'm like, I'm going to vicariously live through you. And I want to know what that would feel like if I had yeah. them. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. I enjoy it, but it has to be a boot. I enjoy it mm -hmm. or want to enjoy. Yeah. You know what's funny is um, I was watching that video and I was thinking like, you know, it's such a waste sometimes when they will do a remake like that, put it on new tooling. It's almost like that Pred 94, it would be so cool if you could branch out and almost make that like fusion skin upper part of like just, just another silo. Like just take that concept and just try to make like a new, I mean, we're always talking about cutting down the amount of silos that boots actually have. But I was looking, I was like, man, that would actually be a really cool, like, uh, in place of something like the, uh, what were the boots that you just got from Adidas not too long ago? The, the icon. icon? Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. Like upgrade the, <clears throat> like the icon or something. Yeah. That's what I think the Gloro should be. Right. I think, I think that if the icon is essentially like, a a cheaper alternative to the Copa line. I think that the Gloro to me should be a cheaper alternative line to the Preds. Mm -hmm. So you could have the fold over tongue. You might not have the same elements or whatever. You could change up the boot, but I think that Adidas needs to figure out a way to make a more mass produced fold over tongue model. Yeah, That's not a bad decent. idea. You know right. what I mean? Cause the, the, I think the problem with the, the current Gloro is the tooling. I think the tooling is terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the same thing I told you about the Premier. Those those boots, the great thing about them is that they're so cheap, but when you have such a cheap boot, you that's where you sacrifice. So I think that something needs to give I I would say even raise the price just a bit, you know, if you need to do like $25 to give mm -hmm. them a, a much better sole plate. 
Yeah, and I mean that's that's kind of been my um, and we can kind of get into this in a second too. That's been my irk with the uh, the four four two like insane insane boot. If you made that sole plate just a little bit stiffer, mm -hmm. like you would have such an amazing product. Um, and so with that, uh, New Balance released their Grade A pack, which I know that we've been giving New Balance a lot of you know flack about. Yeah their colorways and having just like with the new plus models, just the blue and the white, but the white you can't get in the low. So um, you saw the grade A. What did you think of uh, all those options? All three. Yes. All three are absolutely stunning. I know the fu the future, the Furon and the uh, Tequila are basically the same, um, mm -hmm. but I, I love both. Like I would happily yeah. wear either one of those. And the 442 is, it looks I don't know what it is about that boot, but every time I see that 442 with the how the silver and the dark gray is, the mm -hmm. Terminator comes to my head. So oh, that's really? what I was saying. I always think I'm like, oh, that's the Terminator boot. Like that's instantly where I was like, oh, that's like the first 442 colorway, probably that I'm like, yeah, I'd actually wear that. Yeah, yeah. I and and that's yeah. It's kind of funny that you say it, like because I, I don't mind. I like all three colorways. I I like that 442 because I the thing with New Balance is like they have such a good product in the freaking 442. <laughs> But, like, I've thought, like, even though they color variate and they put, like, white, blue, purple, red, whatever, it's still, like, that kind of, like, uh, you know, Velcro-looking, mall-walking, like, silver in. And I'm like, mm -hmm. please do something with that. Please make it not a mall-walker-looking boot. Um, so with this one, yeah, I thought it I thought it actually looked pretty nice. So, see, I like that. I like the classic in. Oh, you, That's why yeah. I think I like the Tequila and the Furons more now because they just have, like, uh, the basic in. Yeah. And I like, like that way better. Do you also like mall walking and naps? No. I like naps. <laughs> and, tuck, I took... and tucking in your shirt? Me, man. <laughs> I'm just playing, bro. Don't be calling me out like that. She. No. no, no I, I loved all three. Like, absolutely. And I thought, one thing I thought was super cool was, because the last grade A was just the Furon, right? It was just the regular yes. Furon. Okay. That one was that one was sick because it one, actually looks like an old school NBA sneaker. Shoe. No, I'm thinking of like okay, you're thinking of like the cool gray looking New Balance, like kind of like the more like uh, like what the like uh, the kids like what the kids wear. I'm thinking of like the two Velcro strap, like you know white, you know like have you ever seen? Are the you movie, talking about uh, like, like seniors like yes. kind of shoe? Okay, yes. I'm talking like about crazy, like the dad love, shoe, Steve Carell. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. I yes. Know yes. Talking about. Okay. My bad. Roll it back. Um, okay. But no. So the last grade day, they just did that Furon, right? In a mm -hmm. regular. Okay. I looked online and I thought it was super cool that this grade day is all three and mm -hmm. they all have a white option on the grade day too. Yeah. So they did basically all six boots, which I think is super cool of them. Because, you know, normally like uh, like with limited boots, they want to just do one silo or just yeah. one and try to – but I think I think that that might be the first colorway that might actually sell out. Yeah. Because yeah, those are really sick, cool looking. Sick colorway. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I saw them on – I saw them on Elliot, uh, the Tequilas, and I saw them on uh, Sokka. So, yeah, that was, that was, it was pretty cool. It was a good, it was oh, a good yeah. launch by New Balance. Bukayo was wearing those. That's right. Yep. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Are we going to – I, I want to – we're bringing this to a halt right now. Can we talk about the colossal train wreck that is going on at Liverpool right now? You know, Justin, if if I speak right now, <laughs> there will be fire. Dude. There will be fire. The vibes of that team has literally just exploded. I saw a, uh, a clip of Jurgen Klopp and Mo Salah, like, screaming at each yeah. other on the sidelines. Yeah. Mental. That's and that's never happened. A Klopp's bit for the last uh, since 2015. It's been all hugs, all hugs, and except for when he loses and, and he's an a -hole. rainbows. Yeah, but you know that's always that's always the FA's fault. That's the fourth official's fault. It's not our yeah. fault. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyways, but yeah. So, but I've never seen such a weird fallout just before a coach. Like in in the Klopp is literally leaving on his own terms, mm -hmm. and this is what's happening. It's it sucks. It's like. It's like the last season of Game of Thrones or something. It's just like something so great just to, Well, like it's crazy explode. because like you said, so he's leaving on his own terms. So I'm thinking that this man is basically going to pull a Fergie. You know, like yeah. go out on a high, oh, like yeah. all smiles. This guy was like, no. And he looked at Jose Mourinho and was like, I want to do it the way you do it. Oh. And it's just become like an absolute dumpster fire at your club. it has been horrible well, every all of my forwards are out of form except for uh diaz and gakpo and like it, it, I, I that's such a weird thing to say but like salas 
been out of form. Since Nunez AFCON. couldn't. Yeah, since AFCON, Nunez can't hit anything. I think oh, he's so bad. He's so bad. He's yeah. so bad. He is terrible. And I've seen some good things from him. It's just, it's just not clicking. He's, I told you, he, he's just like Nico Jackson. They, they're great footballers, and they do mm-hmm. everything right. But that end product, that final oh. bit to score a goal, they're like, oop. Yeah. Like, yeah. neither one of them can hit the bar outside of a bar. Now that you see that, like, uh, Nunez really does belong at Chelsea, doesn't he? He fit, he Dude, fit right him in and over Nico, there. I'm telling you, him and Nico Jackson are the same player. It's the so final third. Weird. Like they just, just can't. They can. Their link up plays good. They're big. They're muscular. Like they're fast. They're smart. Like like Darwin is a very smart player, but he yes. just cannot score. He's yeah. so allergic to goals. He's so athletic too. He does so many things right. He's so fast. He has an engine. It's just dude. Why can't you just put the ball in the back of the net? It's it's so funny because Holland gets like shit on because. All he can do is yes. put the ball in the back of the net. He's, he's, they're, like the, they're like the yin and yang of each right. other. I'm just like, but Darwin does everything. But anyways, anyways. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's a train wreck. It's a train wreck. It's not fun to watch. Um, I don't know anything about Arnie Slot. I don't know anything about the Dutch League, Fine Org, yeah. whatever. But hopefully he comes in and can do something with this mess. Hopefully Salah goes off to Saudi. We get a big payout and we can re- restart. So, Like, I'm just, I'm smiling because I just like watching other clubs capitulate and become a dumpster fire instead of my club. Because that's my club all the time. Yeah, for the last ten years. Yeah, yeah, eleven, since, eleven years. Yeah, since Fergie, since bro. Fergie left. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Speaking of Liverpool, and I don't want to get too far away from the New Balance topic because we can kind of maybe circle back to that. But in, since you brought it up, we have officially, unofficially rumored um, to go to Adidas starting in 2025. Mm-hmm. So, brought my jersey. This is the last last Adidas jersey I had. Nice. Yeah. Andy Carroll. You Andy got Andy Carroll. Carroll on the back? No, I got nothing. Oh, I got nothing. dude, I was I hoping. Was, this was that was college, bro. I was too I was too cheap to afford, but <laughs> yeah, and like honestly, dude, like we've talked about this on the on the show before about how we think Adidas is probably top tier jerseys, right? Mm-hmm. Of all. Um all those Nike jerseys that I would get for Liverpool wouldn't fit me. Like cuz I'm I probably fit in a large, but I'd have to go XL because of the chest. Because for some reason, Nike wants to do like the old school Puma thing where they just completely compress your chest. But do some of these old ones, like I brought one of my old Warrior. Yeah. See, that was the weird thing about Warrior. They always did like a weird pattern thing on it. Yeah. Well, they were, um, I think they made jerseys for hockey teams. That was like New Balance's like hockey line. Yeah. Oh. And then they had to switch it. They switched it over to MB. Yeah, that's a good jersey. Yeah, this one's this one's dope. This was back when Firmino was number eleven. Bobby. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so I'm I'm excited to go back to Addy. I know like 2010, 2011, they were saying we weren't a big club anymore, and that's why they left. We needed money, so we went with Warrior. Um, we had the guys. Uh, we still the same owners, Boston Red Sox owners, and they were super. Like more, they were more frugal. They were more like about like making good deals and presentation of everything, which probably in the long run is smart. But yeah, that's how we ended up in the uh, little money ball situation. But yeah, what is it? FSG? Is that what it is? FSG. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but think at the same time, like, yeah, it's super frustrating. But you have no financial issues, like yeah, like we do, or a lot of other clubs do. Like mm-hmm. you're you're very much in the green, so. It's yeah. frustrating, but at least your club's like not possibly going to go under. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, if anything, <clears> they <throat> they made a crap ton of money. They made billions of dollars from 2010 to uh, till now. So yeah, yeah, good on no FSG. Copper. Do you think? Yeah. Uh, I was listening to somebody talk the other day. I think it was on SDS, but they were talking about how with Klopp leaving, certain players' contracts are basically up too, and then they met leaves. It. And it's so it's uh the big ones they were talking about was Salah. Virgil, mm-hmm. uh, Allison, and then Trent because Trent may go to Madrid because I guess Madrid's been scoping out Trent and trying mm-hmm. to find a replacement for Danny Carvajal. So, yeah. do you think that Liverpool would allow all those players to leave roughly within one season, or do you think they'll kind of stagger them out and try to at least? I think we would allow Salah to leave, no question, mm-hmm. right now. I think, arguably. When we got that big offer from Saudi last summer, you could have 
we could have maybe let him go because we had gotten Nunez in and we, we like we've always had like five forwards for three spots. Um, and from what I know of this um, Arnie slot is he plays a four three three or four two three one. So it's really going to be kind of like similar people, similar positions, right? Mm-hmm. So I think you could let Sala go. Van Dyke, I think, still probably has a couple more years in him. I, he's definitely on the decline from like his uh, 1920, 2021 seasons. Um, like ever since he tore his ACL, actually, or ever since freaking Jordan Pickford ran and freaking got him in the knee. Anyways, um, I would 1,000% give Trent whatever he needs to stay. I would not let him go to Madrid. Like that is your like elite. I mean, I know you're going to kind of roll your eyes a little bit, but it's not only like your, your homegrown right back poster child, like hype, hype person for Adidas. Like you have like if, and if Adidas is going to sponsor Liverpool, you must keep Trent. You mm-hmm. must keep Trent. And he's young enough to where you want to keep him. See, I think just the problem is in general, like, I don't think, even though it's Trent, and I get what you're saying, like, you want to keep a lot of those, like, players just, like, that doesn't exist anymore. Like, there's no mm-hmm. such thing as, like, one club players really anymore. You know, there's yeah. no there's no more Steven Gerrards. There's no more, even though he's not technically, there's no Frank Lampards, Paul Scholes, mm-hmm. and C- there's Roy Keynes. There's nobody like that. Tatis, yeah. So I, I, I just, part of me wonders, and because Adidas sponsors Madrid, too, Part of me wonders if Liverpool would get desperate enough and if Madrid came in with a big enough offer that it'd be like, all right, man, like, like how yeah. do you say no to that? You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's that's a problem too is when you get such a big payout from like if Saudi pays for Salah, if Madrid pays for Trent, everybody like everybody freaking knows you have whatever it's going to be, like $300 million, $400 million. So they're going to overcharge you on every right back that you want to replace Trent with or every – uh, so I don't see, I don't see, obviously Saul is a world-class player, but it's not like we don't have a good forward line mm-hmm. without him. Like we mm-hmm. still have, uh, Jota and, um, Diaz, like, well, we'd be okay, but, um, Van Dyke would be a huge, you would really have to get a good center back. Yeah. yeah. And then who, who's your backup right back? What's his name? The kid? Uh, the kid, I don't know the kid's name. That's, Connor that's a bad, something? That's, uh, that's a bad Liverpool fan. Um, but uh, yeah, I and I'm he's actually not bad. Um, yeah, he was doing a pretty good job. I think he got injured, so Trent had to come in. Okay. Yeah, but sometimes I mean Joe Gomez can play there, yeah. the right back position. So we'd be okay. But yeah, we definitely need we would definitely need something close to a world class center back to replace Van Dyke. And yeah. And Allison, we have to keep too. Goalkeepers can go for like. Till they're almost 40 so yeah yeah for sure well i think it's, i mean also like we say you know it's pure speculation but we don't know this new coach what's his name slot mm-hmm. yeah arnie slot slot yeah we, i mean we don't know like the way he's gonna play football i don't watch fine i'm not gonna pretend like i yeah. watch that at all um so he may came come in and play a totally different style of football and you'd be like yeah we don't need trent anymore or we don't mm-hmm. need this person because we have this person that can play this better so it'll be yeah. interesting to see what happens with liverpool you know yeah um, okay, so back 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 up, back to New Balance. What did you think about the gray days? Because oh, I loved it. I loved uh, I loved all the colorways. Um, yeah, even the four four twos. Like I I like they're all to me. Like I'm like okay, this is a really good pack. Mm-hmm. Um, if if there was a time to get uh, New Balance, I think this is where you you want to jump in. I think I believe they're still on pre order though for some sites, which is kind of weird. Um, I would think that that would be a boot that you'd want readily available so people could. Buy, mm-hmm. but um, even at places like we got soccer where you can get boots pretty cheap, like they're on pre order. And I checked, it was either uh, no, it was yesterday. I think they had just two left of the tequila. So, really, um, on yeah, pre order, yeah, yeah, on a pre order. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, you have to jump on those quick. So, soccer.com doesn't say anything about how many they have left, so you'd probably still be okay there. And obviously, Unisports probably got some good amount, but um, yeah, that that's a that's a colorway where I would want, I would put out as many as possible. Cause like, that's the boot that's going to, that's a colorway that's going to sell those boots. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think just all brands need to be, especially new balance needs to be aware of that. Like, Hey, like this, people are going to love this colorway. It's going to sell. Like if you want to sell as many boots as you can keep as many quantities of this colorway as you can. Yeah. And I think it's just, I think it's a different enough colorway that's kind of out there and nobody seems to have 
gray boots right now. So right. I definitely think that that's a, a smart move of New Balance to put everybody in these gray boots that kind of – because, again, when everybody's wearing so much flash, when you wear a more subtle thing, you mm-hmm. start to stick out. So, yeah, yeah, yeah no, for sure. I, I, I definitely like, – I think I might get another pair of, of uh, tequilas just because I yeah. like that pack so much. Yeah, and these would be the plus version, so they're a little different. Which, uh, speaking of, like, I know our friend Footloose Boots did uh, – he did, like, a really long story kind of showing that um, – because I know you haven't spent a lot of time with Tequila, but it seems like these, like they stretch a little bit, but he was able to pinch a little bit of the material and he mm-hmm. tied them in a certain way to give himself some more um, responsiveness to the boot. And he kind of showed how much his foot was moving in the Tequila. So mm-hmm. um, sizing seems to be pretty important on those. Yeah. Well, again, the the Tequila is like very much a sock boot. Mm-hmm. So whenever like this whole sock boot trend started in 2014, what the tequila is now, that's what I thought everything was. So I thought it was basically mm-hmm. – essentially, yeah, like if you had a flimsy you know, sock on a soul plate, like that's what it was. So with Andrew, and I spoke with him too, it's – he wants more responsiveness out of that boot, and that boot is just not made to be that way. Like he wants more mm-hmm. of that Superfly 4. He needs some kind of flywire cables or Brio cables to kind of lock his midfoot in. But for me – and he – Okay, a lot of our friends seem to like their feet suffocated in boots, and I don't know why. I don't know how they deal with it, but, like, I cannot have my toes on the very end, and I cannot have my boot that tight. Like, when Andrew when Andrew sent me the picture of him wearing that tequila, I literally had, like, an anxiety panic and decent tag. I was like, oh, my God. Like, oh, I feel so claustrophobic looking at your photo. Um, so it's really funny to me because, again, I think that's why I like – my fold over tongue preds because mm-hmm. I wear them all Beckham style. So I get a little bit of flair and looseness. So I feel like my feet can breathe. So right. again with Andrew, it, and it's not just a fault to him, but it's just, it's funny because that is such a good boot. And he even says it's a good boot, but it's not a good boot for him. Right. Right. And yeah, we all have, we all have our preferences. Like obviously, you know, like I'm a heel lockdown guy and I know that that boot is very like heel shaped. And that's what everybody says about it is it mm-hmm. has great heel lockdown. And so I think that combination with a little bit of stretch, um, kind of like the GX2 gave me like a little bit of stretch. Like I think I, I think I'd actually like that boot a lot. But but it, see, and then you get really technical with it, and you say like I really want a lot of um, good support in the midfoot because that's that good support in the midfoot is almost what separates like more modern style boots from these older kind of Copa Mundial boots. And like it's a huge difference because I've told you I've even played in um some morelia twos and i'm like dude this still isn't enough like lockdown of what i need in the midfoot like i need something more modern so uh yeah so the tequila it's it's kind of an interesting type of boot where it 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 checks off a lot of modern boxes but then it kind of gives you that like that freedom of like having like an actual sock or like an old school style Mm -hmm. like not that the boot is leather but like an old kind of like leather fit so that's kind of cool and you wore the tequilas longer than i did do they get (laughs) sloppy like, do they start to get sloppy after a while? Dude, they, I, well, the one, the versions that I had were the, um, the ones I wore the most were the laceless versions. So it, it was, it started. Oh off, so, yeah. And I got, and I got a wide version in that because I believe, I think I watched uh, one of Noah's and he had recommended the wide and, and the wides and they, and they fit pretty well. But I think I would have, no, I so what I, I think I went wide close to the toe and what I ended up doing after that was I got just a half size up and a regular fit and mm-hmm. that was perfection yeah that's so yeah so it was a little sloppy just because of the version that i had oh, okay yeah i need i need to try i need to wear mine some more i just uh i'm just so hooked on the rotero right now that i like yeah. don't i don't it's, want it's to tough, wear anything dude. else it's dude. tough yeah yeah um <clears throat> but yeah any let's see any boots on the horizon that we're after i'm gonna probably try to i may try to do a review of that tequila and compare it because my even though i'm not a liverpool guy i have the harvey elliott's and they're still relatively new so i Mm -hmm. might end up doing a comparison from these to the the v4 plus and i'll let you guys know i'd actually like that you should do your uh your under a minute comparison to a plus model versus an old old model dude i'm about to no No i'm not gonna get i'm gonna make a a one minute video that's gonna be fun but i it's gonna be very very uh informational and if you're not a pred head you you will 100 percent have to watch this video all right um let's see you're talking about boots on the horizon. So I just saw this pop up. Uh, it's okay. So the Puma Ultra that we're on right now, right? It's just the Puma Ultra Ultimate. Yep. Right? 
because I'm looking at footy headlines that's saying new and upcoming and it says Puma Ultra 7 Ultimate. Now, is that what the next Ultimate's going to be called? Like, have you heard about this at all? I haven't, but that makes sense because they just called the future the future 7. Right, right. So, so they try to always get that same kind of naming that yeah, which is smart. Right. And I know that you and I have been kind of talking about like what can Puma do other than completely scrap like what they have now? So it'll be cool. Like I feel like once that first domino drops of like the new Ultra, we'll kind of get a sense of like what direction Puma is going in mm-hmm. overall, which will be which will be re- really cool because like I I you know, beat this horse to death too. Is just this generation is it's bad. Like I like I'll say it. Like I, it's bad. I don't want any boot. So it'll be cool to see kind of what they come up with. Yeah, I mean it's 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 fun to think about too that like honestly how bad they kind of are especially the ultra especially because Mm -hmm. uh mark our friend gcfc training was ranting and raving about how he got a pair of ultras from my other friend halt's boots and he used the salmon ones i think it's the world cup ones and he's like oh these are the best boots i've ever had i don't care what anybody says blah blah blah. then he got the pink ones that just came out not so long ago and he's like these are terrible i (laughs) never want to wear these boots i drank the punch and now i'm regretting it Uh so it will be interesting to see if anybody, because again, like not to be like rude to Puma. I mean, they're a big brand; they don't care. But like, I don't know a single person that actively likes their boots right now. Most of the time, like any of our friends or anybody that I've talked to you about the Puma boots are like, "Oh, I got them for like thirty bucks, mm-hmm. so I just wear them." Yeah, yeah. Hey, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, right? I guess. Let your feet bleed. Bleed for yeah. the. Bleed for the the saving money yeah (sighs) but all right man well before we get out of here tell the people where they can find you uh you can find me at kicking with kolbs on youtube and on instagram if you want to see um what the uh tempo legend 10 pearl looks like up close just made a video on those so you guys can go go look at that if you'd like very nice. You can find me at Texas Cleat Collector on Instagram and YouTube. Um, and you can also reach us out at, at Bootcast Pod on Instagram. Um, if you guys have any questions, let us know. If you have any topics you want us to talk about, let us know. We're, we're always looking at every comment. And we appreciate literally yeah. everybody who leaves a comment, like Nevin, uh, Boot Maniac, Lockhart, Boot Wizard, all those guys that leave comments. Love it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, We'll see you. You'll see you in the next one. Unless yes, I, I have uh, with child. So. Yeah, if, if Colby is missing, guys, he's not fired. He just had a baby. Yeah. All right, man. You guys take care. All right, dude. See you guys.